When you come across some interesting data, it could come in many forms. A spreadsheet, a PDF, an image of a spreadsheet in a PDF, an HTML table, a database, any of these. Depending on what tool you use for data visualization, usually you need to prepare, clean, massage the data to make it compatible with the tool. I'm going to talk a little bit about preparing data for visualization using web technologies like React and D3. We'll discuss extracting data from HTML tables, exporting and cleaning CSV files, comma separated value text files, and publishing data using GitHub GIST, a commonly used way of getting public data available. Have you ever wondered which named colors can you have in CSS? It turns out MDN, Mozilla Developer Network, has a page about just this topic. This one here, color in CSS. You may have seen yellow or blue used as the fill attribute of an SVG element, and you may have wondered what other colors are there. It turns out there's quite a bit of history here. CSS level 1 had 16 colors. CSS level 2 added orange. And more colors were added in CSS level 3 and also level 4. But here's the big list. This is the list of all named colors in CSS. See how it's actually arranged in a table? When I see this table, I see a data table. I would really like to see all these colors arranged in a nice way on the screen so that I can see them all at once and don't need to do this scrolling thing. To realize that dream, let's load this data into our program with D3 and then visualize it. Data is typically represented either as CSV, comma separated values, or JSON, J-S-O-N, JavaScript Object Notation. In order to load this data into our program, we first need to get it into a format that our code can understand, like CSV. Here's one way you can do that. If you have data in an HTML table like this, you can just select all of it, like this, and then hit Control-C to copy it, and then in Google Sheets or other spreadsheet programs like Excel or LibreOffice spreadsheet program. These programs understand HTML tables when you paste them. So in here, I can hit Control V to paste that table right in here. I'll name this spreadsheet CSS Colors, or Named Colors, rather. In order to generate a clean CSV file, we need what's called a header row. And that needs to be the first row. That contains the names of the columns. Right now, we have this empty row at the top, which will actually mess things up. So I'm just going to delete that row. And the only columns I'm interested in here are the keyword and the RGB hex value. These other ones I don't think would translate well to CSV, so I'm going to delete this column, and I'm also going to delete this column. Specification could be interesting. See, that's that says when these colors were introduced, which version of CSS. I don't know if these sort of cells like this would translate correctly into CSV, but let's give it a try. Before we export, I'll just check the bottom of the file to make sure everything looks good. Yeah, no craziness at the bottom. And now that it's ready, we can export as CSV by going File, Download, Comma Separated Values CSV. So we got this new file here. And if I open it up, see now it's opening up on my Linux machine in uh, LibreOffice. See, it did translate well to some extent. But this, these empty rows are a bit problematic. I would call this kind of dirty data. It needs to be cleaned a little bit. And this is part of the cleaning, filling in these values like this. Oh, that's not what we want. 
spreadsheet program. It should be level one, level one. This is because the code is going to analyze each row sort of independently, and it doesn't have access to the previous values. I mean, we could write some code to fill this in, but let's just clean it up at this level of our CSV file. So these should all be CSS level one. You've got to be kidding me. It's filling in these are wrong. Now let's just do it like this. Copy, paste. And the same thing for this one. I'm going to copy that one cell, select a bunch of cells, and then paste. And then scroll down and shift click. All right, now we've got all these values filled in. So I'm going to export from here. I think it's save as. And I'll call it CSS named colors dot CSV. And then I'll hit save. And yes, I want CSV format. Let's take a look at the text contents of this file. I'm going to open up this file in my favorite text editor, Vim. And this is what we see. This is what CSV files look like. It's just a text-based representation of a data table that you might see in a spreadsheet program. CSV, comma, separated values, it means that commas separate the values for each column within each row. Each row is represented as a single line. And the first row is special. It's called the header row because it contains the column names. Now that we've got all of our CSS named colors available in this uh, CSV file, we need to make this accessible on the web. One common way of doing this today is by using GitHub Gist. If you go to gist.github.com, you can upload a CSV file here, and GitHub will host it for you forever for free. So I'll add a description. I'll add a file name, CSS named colors.csv, camel case. And then for the content of this, I'm going to paste that file contents. So I'll open it up in uh, gedit, which on Linux is a convenient way to copy a bunch of text. Control A to select all, and then Control C. And then over here, I'll just hit Control V to paste all the data in here. That looks good, so I'll say create public gist. Now it's available at this URL forever, and then if I click raw, it takes me to a URL that I can use in code to extract this raw CSV file. And I think this part of the URL is the commit, so it's a particular version. I can shorten the URL by just removing that part, and it still works. Now it gets me the latest version, so if it just changes, we get the latest up-to-date version. That's how we can extract data from an HTML table, make a CSV file from it, and upload it to GitHub Gist so that now we have a URL that we can put in our code to download this data. And I'm noticing it's not quite clean here. Look at this. It says cyan synonym ofaka. And there's a new line there. Let me just clean that up real quick. In GitHub Gist, you can actually edit these files directly. So in here, I'll find that mistake or problem. Yeah, cyan, cyan synonym ofaka. I'm going to get rid of that new line. Wait a minute. Synonym of aqua, I think. This suggests to me that there really should be two entries here. One for cyan that just has cyan, and another one for aqua. Let's see, is there anything else like that? Okay, yeah, magenta, synonym of fuchsia. I'll do the same process here. Now we've got one entry for magenta and one entry for fuchsia. Anything else? That's it. So I'll update this public gist. And now that same URL from before will get us this very clean version. That's all for preparing data for visualization.